Welcome to the Tribe of Testimonies. Here you will find conversations with faithful Native American members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, sharing their stories and their love of the Savior. My name's Andrea Hales. I'm Navajo, and I'm glad that you've decided to come and join us today. My guest today is Debbie Blackburn. It's uh, fun because, um, really, I only knew her because she was in the stake that I grew up in, so the little tiny town, and she was a bus driver, a local bus driver, but kids don't talk to the bus driver very much, and her son grew up in the same grade as my brother, so I didn't know her very well, and it was fun to get to know her. She's a convert as a young adult, a a recently married young adult, and so she has lived her life, her adult life, as a, a member of the church, and I love that she that her testimony was so strong that even even though it was hard with with her husband not living the same way she did that she's she always stayed strong i love that about her i hope you enjoy this conversation because uh, her testimony is real and true and here she is I'm on the phone today with Debbie Blackburn. She's a lady that I, in the same small town that I grew up in, and uh, I actually didn't know you had this heritage before until just recently, so that's kind of, I just didn't even know. Debbie, would you please introduce yourself in your tribal way as much as possible? If it's in your language, great. If it's not, that's fine. Not everybody speaks their language, and some languages are dead. Yeah. Hi, I'm Debbie Blackburn. Um, I am Choctaw and Cherokee, which comes from my mother's mom and dad. My grandpa was Cherokee, my grandma Choctaw. And um, so I have both of those. They come from Oklahoma and Texas and Arkansas. And they... um, have helped my family a whole lot, actually, the Choctaw Nation. And I'm actually Mississippi Choctaw, which I didn't know until I started doing my genealogy. Hmm. That's cool. Debbie, would you please share something that you love about your heritage as it relates to the gospel of Jesus Christ? It can be pretty much anything, a story, a celebration, a way of life, a ceremony, What do you love about your heritage as it relates to the gospel? I love doing the genealogy I did and the things that I found out. Um, So my neighbor, I don't know if you remember Tonette Thomas, she um, did genealogy. She was like over it a lot. And so I was talking to her and I wanted to, after I got baptized in 79, I wanted to find my Indian heritage and look up, you know, I was doing my genealogy, trying to take it back eight generations. And so I couldn't find a lot on the Choctaw people. That's who I went for first. And she had had a dream and it was an Indian woman. And she had like a specific clothing on and she wasn't sure what it was so she kind of investigated it and she found out that it was the bridal ceremony clothing and it was really awesome and so she dreamed that she dreamed that yeah it's amazing (laughs) and um so we looked into more of my choctaw nation heritage and we couldn't find a whole lot. And so we went up to the um, Salt Lake History Genealogy Library. And there was a man there. His name was Max. And he, like, knew all about it. And so he knew about the Mississippi Choctaw and the Dawes Rolls and how these Indians had um, come from different places into, I think, basically, they came into Oklahoma and Texas. But they had... Um, walked a long ways 
and they were on the Dawes rolls. And um, the government, like, kept track of all this. And we found my great, I think that's my great, great grandmother. And she actually was full-blooded Choctaw. And she had married a full-blooded Irishman. And they have had 10 kids. And she had gotten, the Choctaw Nation had put, like, all of her kids through college. And just just helped her immensely you know and i can't remember if he had died earlier her husband but anyways they they just helped him the choctaw nation so in order and they offer that help for all of us actually <laughs> and so we um spent the whole day there and they were on these micro fish things and so they had them all printed out and she had to actually go before white men a council and prove that she was literally full-blooded Choctaw. And it was just horrible how the white men treated them, you know? And they have throughout the centuries, but th it was just horrible. Anyway, she did that. And, and um, I have all of the microfish. I had all that copied off this guy helped me find all this and it was just amazing it was really in, really interesting and and um good to know and i'm the only one that's lds in my family so um i did all this and then we came to find out that if we um applied for our talk talk card we have a card membership like a you know identity saying that we're native american and much and all that stuff but um if we do that, and I had to take it back clear to my great-great-grandmother that was on the Dawes Rolls, so I had to do all that genealogy and tie it in with my grandmother, my mom, and, you know, prove that I was had that bloodline, too. And then they have, the Choctaw Nation has helped my kids and my grandkids with college and school and everything stuff, but it has helped so much, and... I'm so glad that I did my genealogy and it was just amazing when I did like their temple work and baptized them and stuff, you know, cause I could, I could feel them there. It was so neat. <laughs> it was like, this is just so awesome. And I don't know if, if like all of like, I don't know if my grandparents even accepted it, but I could feel like I could just feel them there. It was just really neat. It was so awesome. That is cool. That's super cool. You have you have heritage from both of your parent of your grandparents from your mother from your father. From my mom. Okay, that's cool. And what do you know about how, what other what family history things do you know? I don't know anything about the Cherokee actually a little bit, but not a whole lot. Um, I knew we would get help from the Choctaw because they helped my great great grandmother and her kids, you know, and. And so um, I kind of, well, I don't know. That's just the one I went for, I guess. But I really didn't know that until I did it. So it was just, um, it was just an amazing experience to do that genealogy. I love doing genealogy. So. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I still need to probably do the Cherokee, but I haven't done that yet. So I've done a little bit of it. But um, I think I have them actually both back um, probably close to eight generations. And so you even the ones that are like way back there have their Indian names and stuff like that, you know, which is, which is kind of neat. It's fun to learn all that stuff. And, um, yeah, it's, it's been really fun to do that. I did that right after I got baptized, like in 1980. So, um, cause I was way, I don't know why I worked and I'm like, I don't know how I had time to do this, but I did and I need to do some more. <laughs> yeah. My brother is a year younger or a year behind me in school and he was the same age as one of your children. So Yeah. So I grew up in the same town where you guys have lived forever. Right. What, how did you how did you um come to find the gospel because I didn't know you were a convert either. I don't know anything about you, Debbie. I just know that you <laughs> live there. So um my husband and I met in high school in California. And he had moved here, moved to California with his parents when he was like in second grade, I think. And they lived in, um, over in Spring Canyon. 
and then they have a in Farron. And we met there, and he, um, we were just high school sweethearts, got married when I was like 19. And he had always wanted to come back to Utah. But we lived in California for a while, and he, you know, he was LD. He was baptized, but his family wasn't active. And so um, they would, the missionaries would always come to our house, <laughs> but we didn't let them in. Oh, yeah. You no. Know? Terrible people that don't let the missionaries don't even answer the door. <laughs> it was terrible. <laughs> anyway, so finally we started to, but then um, he decided we wanted. We used to come back here every for deer hunt every October, and his grandparents lived in Clawson, and um, his mom and dad moved back uh, probably about ten years before we moved here, <clears throat> and we uh, came back and. He just one time he's like, okay, I, I really think we need to move to Utah. And I'm like, well, let's, you know, and we actually prayed about it. And we um, put our house up for sale. We had a house in California and I had a, a little boy who he was probably like 18 months when we moved here. But we sold the house and moved back here, ended up living with his parents. He had quit his job in California and we, we um, came back and he applied. He got on at the um, road department first. And then the, um, we wanted to build a house. So we went and applied for that and he working at the road department. He didn't make much money and I wasn't working yet. And he, um, they wouldn't approve us for a loan. So he went into the coal mines and then, um, I got a job with the school district and I was just started out subbing and doing stuff and we built our house and my neighbors, um, Tom and Kathy Adamson were very active, had like tons of brothers and sisters and they started, we started talking about the gospel and I had lived next door, well, across the street from people that were members, were LDS and my dad just, he was so against it, you know, <laughs> it's because this, the guy always put the church before his family and kind of, I guess back then that's kind of what they did. But anyways, so my neighbors started talking to me and we started talking and they, and they answered all my questions out of the Bible because they knew I, you know, didn't have a testimony of the book of Mormon yet. And then, um, they asked me about after three weeks, they gave me a book of Mormon and wanted me to read it and pray about it. I'm like, okay, I can do that. You know? So I did. And, um, I gained a testimony <laughs> and got baptized and I've always had a lot of faith and I guess knew kind of some of it, but not, I had gone to primary with my neighbor across the street. A little bit and to relieve society with my sister-in-law and I loved it but anyways I got baptized and um, then just I've been active ever since very active and my husband wasn't at first and we didn't even go through the temple for a while I at that time you had to have your husband's permission to go through the temple and receive your endowments and so one night I said, I, I really want to go to the temple. And, and uh, he's like, well, can I go with you? I'm like, oh, I didn't think you wanted to. <laughs> You're like, wait a second, wait a second. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and so then we, he had, he'd smoked and chewed and all that. So he had to quit doing that. And we did finally go through the temple. It was just before our 20th wedding anniversary. And my kids were 17 and 12 and 10. And um, it made a really big impact on them, on my boys, the older two. And um, we got sealed. And, and I don't know, we've just, I've, I've stayed very active. I'm very committed. And I know it's true. And, uh, you know, and my husband was always kind of wishy-washy. <laughs> but then after we went through the temple, he uh, he started chewing again. and Because that's really hard to quit. But then it came about probably another five years and then he did quit completely but um we just and we went to the temple and re I raised my kids basically it was me raising my kids in the gospel 
and um, it's just been a, a tremendous blessing for us. And my kids are all very active. We've all gone through the temple and been sealed. And my oldest grandson is on a mission in South Africa right now, which has been awesome. And he's loving it. <laughs> and he's like, the people there are either rich, really rich or really poor. And he says, but they all have the strongest belief in Jesus Christ. And so he's only been out since like, uh, what, August, July or August. And he's had like three or four baptisms already. What? And yeah, it's just been amazing. Because <laughs> like when they teach people, they... um have like they invite all their friends and their family so there's like 20 people when they're teaching somebody so it's just been amazing how how it's just it's just like spreading you know really fast there and um it's it's just great i i love living the gospel and um so you know bob passed away two years ago yeah and um it's like i would really like to get married again but it's not happening. Heavenly Father, there was somebody out there, but not finding him or he's not finding me. I don't know. But anyways, it's kind of depressing. And it's like, because I want somebody that's a righteous priesthood holder, you know, and I'm yeah. not settling for anything less. And yeah. that's what I want in my life. And I really, really miss the priesthood. So in my home. And um Yeah. Through the, the years, it sounds like um, you were doing the, the church a lot, sometimes by yourself. What callings have you had as you've, as you've uh, lived your life? And what are some of your favorites and what are some of your hardest ones? I have been in probably everything. I've been in primary, I think started in primary. Uh, I've been in early society. I have taught lessons in Relief Society. I've also been in the presidency a couple of times, and I have been in Young Women's. Um, this is my third time in Young Women's, which I'm in now, and I love Young Women's. <laughs> oh, I bet and it's I so it. different than when you were in it before. Well, and I wasn't ever in Young Women's in oh, my yeah. childhood. Yeah. So I've loved Young Women's. And yeah, it is different. They've changed it so much just from when I was in there like six years ago. Uh-huh. And and this with this presidency, we've been in like a year now. And um, yeah, everything is so, so different. Like no personal progress. It's just goals. And it's like, basically, they have to decide for themselves and, you know, and either do it or not do it. But the girls are, they're fantastic. The girls we have are, they have so much faith we have some that aren't very very active and some that their parents don't want them to be you know there so that's hard but because we really we really would love them to be here but um I love young women so I have always loved it the best (laughs) it's just so fun (laughs) and um I love girls camp and youth conference and all that stuff because we get to go camping and it's just it's really fun i love young women so they're, they're amazing amazing so what are some of the hardest callings that you've had and what did you learn from those experiences oh i guess um hardest was teaching like in release society because i don't and even though that my job was teaching <laughs> but um I guess I I just had to learn how to really trust in the spirit, you know, and and let the spirit guide me in in doing that. But I have learned to trust in the spirit and everything I do. And especially since I started dating and that's really hard. It was scary. I'm like, you know what? This is really scary to have to do this because I only dated my husband and that was when I was 15, you know, and now it's like, (laughs) 69 when I start dating again I'm like this is ridiculous so, and it's been really hard it's just um trusting in the Lord you know and then I've dated five guys and he just keeps telling me they're not the right one and I'm like come on Heavenly Father one of them's got to be the right one would you please send me the right one then <laughs> what, 
problem here? Is it me? Am I not doing something I'm supposed to do? Um, what's going on? I don't know, but I keep feeling like I'm waiting on somebody and it's like, okay, would you please hurry up? It was supposed to happen four months ago. So. <laughs> here that's funny yeah i could imagine that would be really frustrating yeah it is were you a teacher in schools an aide okay a teacher and i drove the bus but you know oh, i was an right. aide at school i did know yeah. you drove the bus yeah but yeah i did that for like 32 years so it was a long time wow what grades did you help in I did pretty much throughout my career, the whole, all of them, but I loved kindergarten and first grade the best. They were so great. (laughs) And I got to teach the kindergartners to read and write and do arithmetic. And it was just, it was fun. I loved that one the best, I think. But I did, um, I did all of them, I think, second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth. Not so much the older ones, the fifth and sixth, more the younger, like, but, um, yeah, I think I did all of them. Different ones each year, you know. Usually had two or three each year, different grades. But um, that was really, that was really good. It was fun. I loved it. I loved working with the kids. So now you're retired. I am. And you don't have a husband at the moment. So what do you do to fill your time? I try to keep busy because it gets really lonely. Mm-hmm. <laughs> take care of the yard and the house so I've been really busy all summer you know taking care of the yard mowing it and weeding it and all that stuff I have a guard had a garden and I always have a garden in the summer and that keeps me really busy and of course taking care of the house does too then I go I go up to my kids quite a lot um Nick lives in um Provo my daughter lives in Saratoga Springs and then my other son lives in Wyoming I did go there when he got set apart for his mission and that was really awesome and it's like a six and a half hour drive by myself and I don't do that well so (laughs) I had to stop in the middle and walk around Walmart and Vernal (laughs) anyway um I and I want to do more genealogy and I haven't done it yet it's like I got to make time for this stuff and um young woman's keeps me very busy because we have activity you know, once a week, we just barely took the young woman to the um, St. George Temple open house a couple of weeks ago. And then one of the counselors, her mom and dad live in Hurricane. So we um, stayed the night there. And then um, the next day we met the boys in Cedar City and did baptisms. First, before we left, we did some um, historical stuff in St. George. And so it was really fun. We had a good time. It was really good. And, um, we just, we do some good activities and we try to, you know, do what the girls, let the girls plan out. They're supposed to plan everything now and do all that. And they teach our classes, uh, every now and then we have later teach, but usually it's the girls. We've been trying to do an older girl and a younger girl together so they can, you know, the younger girls can hopefully learn from the older girls, which they do. And, um, It's just been, it was really fun to do that, to go to the temple with them. We try to do baptisms, I think, about every three months. So that keeps them going. Through the years, how has your ward changed? I think it depends on the bishop. You know, some of them are, like, the bishop we have now is really, and they're supposed to be, he's really into the kids, which is great because the kids are, the future you know and there's a lot of kids that struggle um other bishops have been well you know like into the kids but not not as much as this one and i think it's just the day and age and what's going on in the world but i don't know how has it changed i think it's just more into the kids now than it used to be because they're going to be our leaders <laughs> and Christ is going to come soon. So we've got to get them ready. Um, one question that I love to ask is um, what, 
What are some of your favorite scriptures or scripture stories, something that has affected your, you personally and or your testimony? I was like them all. <laughs> <laughs> I read the Book of Mormon every day and then try to then do this, come follow me every week, study that and read those scriptures. I love the Lord's Prayer, uh, which is in the Bible. And I love reading the scriptures about the second coming and um, stuff like that. Anything about Jesus. I love about reading about Jesus. Um, and now like Nephi and, you know, he was over his brothers and how he had to be an example for them. And, and I just, this is the third time this year. I think I've just started reading the book of Mormon again. And, and I, I don't know. I love them all. I, I really like the ones about the second coming. Yeah. I, I actually, I remember when I first started seminary, that was uh, like um, brother Siemens. He was my seminary teacher. He's like, what questions, what, what would you like to learn about this year? And that was what I put even as a ninth grader. I'd like to learn more about the second coming. So it's always been on my mind, even since I was young. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, that's been on my mind since I got baptized, I think. But I heard the other day, and my ministers came, and they, we were talking about church, and they one of them said that they had heard that the prophet that will be the prophet when Jesus comes is in the 12 apostles now. I'm like, wow, that's awesome. I mean, it could be 50 years, but it could also be like five or 10, you know. Let's get it sooner than later. Come on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> Don't let it get worse than this. <laughs> yeah, but it will. It will get worse. <laughs> I know. That's what I keep hearing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, on one of the prophecies is that Israel be, will be invaded, you know, and that's happening now. So, okay, this is getting closer. <laughs> yeah, there <laughs> there are definitely signs that are that are being yeah happening. So, yeah, yeah. yes, there definitely are lots of them. Yeah. So, who is somebody that has really influenced your life, and how have they influenced? Uh, my neighbors that shared the gospel with me, Tom and Kathy Adamson. They moved a long time ago up to Lehigh. Well, almost Lehigh, I think. But anyways, yeah, we're still in contact. And and I know I asked her to find me in heaven and the gospel. <laughs> She's like, yeah, I thought that too. <laughs> so it's it was, yeah, they, they've been the most influential. And even her husband came over and taught me. And he served a mission in South America. And they were talking about their experiences and, you know, finding different things to that prove, you know, the Book of Mormon's true there, which was, it was amazing. It was really neat. The things he shared with me, I can't remember what they are now, but I know he did. And that was, that was really not awesome. Yeah. What is a tender mercy that you have received that, you know, Heavenly Father was aware of you? I, would, I always receive them. He fills me with peace and comfort. And he just blesses me continually. It's amazing. And and I love it. And um, I haven't shared this with anybody. But when, oh, how old was my daughter? She was in, however our old third graders are, I had... Um, a lump in my breast and I went to the doctor and um, I could feel the doctor had walked out for some reason or I was wait maybe waiting for him to come in and <clears throat> I could feel I had prayed and felt Heavenly Father and Jesus's hands on my heads my head and they they gave me a blessing when I was in there and that was just amazing it was awesome and I need to write that down I guess <laughs> it was it was awesome 
And then I was I had some depression because my husband wouldn't go to church and was being a punk. But anyways, I had um, Indians. I saw Indians in my house, and they were um, just there to comfort me. There was a woman sitting in my hallway, and she was weaving a basket. And um, there was just different ones doing different things and and that was a tender mercy definitely that was awesome that's amazing <laughs> or angels you know my yeah. my ancestors i'm sure yeah but yeah amazing that's really cool i i know a lot of of um lehi's posterity have visions and and uh I haven't been blessed with that. So whenever I hear things like that, I'm like, that's amazing. I I love that. I love that the veil is pulled back for some some of us enough to just remind us how much Heavenly Father loves us. Yeah. And then I have, and this one just happened. It was um, my neighbor, Annette Sailing. Do you remember oh, Annette yeah. and Larry Sailing? Yes. So her, Larry died here a few months ago. And she was cleaning out his um, office, his desk, and she found this letter. And um, it's it was to her, but it said that he he has you know he was sorry that he had to leave her. He didn't want to, but he had to go help Bob, my husband, and some others on their journey after this life, you know, on their next life. I'm like, wow, it gave me the gives me the chills every time I think about it. But um, he kept apologizing because he didn't want to leave her, but he'd been really sick. And he said, it, but it was his his time. He knew he was being called to do this, to help Bob. He mentioned Bob's name two or three times and others <clears throat> on their um, their life now. And I'm like, wow. So I shared that with my kids and they were all like, whoa, you know, and I hadn't felt blah 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 I hadn't felt like he was very happy and <clears throat> so but since that letter and since Larry has passed away I felt like he's a little happier and I'm like wow but that letter was like just gave me the chills I'm like whoa and there wasn't a date on it but he'd been sick in bed for a couple months so it had to be before that probably and um it's like whoa <laughs> okay wow <laughs> That was, yeah, really, really neat. Wow, that is really neat. Huh. And and that just shows you how much Heavenly Father has an eye over us. How he yeah. is helping us to love and serve one another and puts us in the right place at the right time. Or for yeah. most of your lifetime in your case. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, he, he blesses me so much. Most of the time. Yes, he does. And my kids. My kids are really blessed, too. So it's it's been awesome. What um, stories from your from your native heritage have strengthened you, have have given you determination or have just been like um, affected you somehow? Well, I think when I look of my genealogy and found this trail of tears, you know, and that they were all on the Dawes rolls. I think that really influenced me a lot to, to dwell into it more just to see, I don't know. Well, I, I went through all those microfish things and just to hear the stories, the things, horrible things they had to go through that the white man put them through, you know, and it's like, really, that that's just mean. It's just mean, you know? And it was not fair at all to him. But the Lamanites are, you know, when I had my patriarchal blessing and I got, I come from Manasseh, which is the Indian side. And um, <clears throat> it's, I think it's a great heritage. I'm very grateful for it. And I love the Indian cultures and things. And I would, I would, I would like to go back to Oklahoma and go through the museum there. And um, actually, I, I met a guy who just went back to his daughters, and he stopped there and went through it and was telling me about it. 
and um, I'm like, wow, I want to do, I want to go there and look at all that stuff. But just to um, see the different ways they had to live and things they had to go through, I, I feel very, very blessed now. Yeah. You're talking about that new museum, University of Oklahoma? Is that? I don't know it? if it's in the university. It's in Oklahoma. I can't remember exactly where, but. The church helped fund a family history slash native heritage. Yeah. So I wonder if that's one you're friend was talking about yeah that could be it yeah could be yeah that would be really cool i would like to go there too elder echo hawk um went down there for the grand opening of it so oh, really mm -hmm. yeah that would be awesome i was in oklahoma when i was just little like a little kid probably like five or four and i don't remember much but i would like to go again I still have, I don't know if all, any of my relations, I think there's still some that are alive, but I would like to go to that museum. Yeah. <laughs> so maybe someday we'll see. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Jerem, his wife, his, uh, his widow, she goes on trips every once in a while by herself. And I'm like, that's so weird. No, wait, that's so cool. <laughs> <laughs> you should do it. You should totally go, Debbie. <laughs> Yeah, but I can't drive that far by myself, so I'm going to have to can go with me, I guess. Or else take a whole lot of breaks. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's been really fun to <clears throat> to get to know you, even though I grew up where you live. <laughs> I didn't really know you. Um, I do have a final question. What does it mean to you to know that you belong to the tribe of Israel? It means the world to me, I guess. I, I love living the gospel, and I'm so grateful that it came into my life. Um, I'm the only one in my family that's LDS, so my, my dad really struggled with me joining the church. But I think the last time I really saw him, he wanted to talk about it, but we didn't. He was, like, sitting on the couch, and I was getting ready and packing to go, and... Um, it just I was like, okay, dad, do you want to talk? But, <laughs> but we didn't. So uh, I'm hoping, I haven't done their work yet. I'm hoping that they will accept the gospel. And I haven't kind of felt prompted to do it yet, but more so since Bob passed away. Um, so we'll see what happens. But I just feel it's a, a great blessing. And it's been a, a, just a wonderful, great blessing to me and my family. Well, thank you, Debbie, for your time. Thank you, Andrea. So I recently went to training for church, right? So it's the Utah area training. And one of the talks was about the sacrament meeting and how the focus of sacrament meeting should be Jesus Christ. Like, focus, focus, focus. And fast and testimony meetings. Testimony meetings should be focused on Jesus Christ. Focus, focus, focus. And I really actually appreciated that talk. I was like, I need to do better about that. I personally need to do better about centering my thoughts on Jesus Christ as as I sit there. Sometimes it's easy for me and sometimes it's hard. And it's up to me how I react to it and how I how I pay attention. So that's a new goal for me is do better about making the, the sacrament meeting about Jesus Christ. I can't rely just on on the bishopric. I can't rely on the speakers. I need to do that for myself. And I appreciated that. Um, I don't know if any of you have thought of that recently or have always thought of that. Perhaps you have. Um, but it was it was pretty impactful to me. And so that's why I wanted to share it with you today. 
it was really good to be reminded of that. So that's my short little thought for you today and I hope you have a super wonderful awesome day. Tribe of Testimonies is not sponsored by The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. The music is a traditional hymn, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing, arranged and performed by Kyle Forsyth. I would love to hear from you. I would love to hear how this podcast is affecting you. And I'm always looking for guests. If you or someone you know would be a great guest, you can reach me at tribeoftestimonies at gmail.com.